Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Today, we will take a look at the liturgical assembly, the roles and functions of the ordained and the lay ministers, the liturgical environment so that we may preserve its richness, dignity, and order, and of course, the day of all days, Sunday, when we gather to commemorate the sacrifice and resurrection of Christ. So come, join us. Let us enrich our knowledge of the Holy Mass, the source and summit of Christian life. In the Mass, the people who gather do not simply attend and watch, but rather actively participate. The liturgy is an exercise of the priesthood of Christ as performed by His mystical body, the Church. The participation of the faithful is grounded in the membership of each Christian in the body of Christ through baptism. Whenever we gather to celebrate the Mass, it is the Lord who gathers us. We are assembled through, with, and in Christ in the unity with the Holy Spirit that we may worship the Father in spirit and in truth. As one body, when we participate in the Eucharist, we participate in the saving work of Christ. That's why, given the importance of the Mass and how it is intrinsically connected to who we are as Christians and as a church, it is imperative that we take part in the Sunday Mass with our community. In the past, only altar boys and those preparing to become priests were allowed to assist the priest in the celebration of the Mass. The rest simply remained at their seats watching the rituals, participating in the singing of the hymns, and from time to time responding, et cum spiritu tuo, and Amen. The women, then, were not even allowed to step into the sanctuary. Active participation of the faithful, however, became one of the key bywords of Vatican II. The Council teaches that all baptized Christians are members of the royal priesthood and therefore can participate in worship without diminishing the role of the ordained priesthood. Our baptism is the justification why we, lay people, can serve as liturgical ministers in the following roles. These people participate in the Mass in the same way as ordinary Mass goers do, but they carry out additional tasks for the celebration. That is their way of participating in the Mass. The place where we celebrate the Mass is important, for it is the place where we encounter Christ. That is why we build churches. The churches are primarily liturgical spaces. They are meant primarily for liturgical celebrations. We build them that we may gather at a place safe from the elements and conducive for prayer and worship. The central point of any church is the altar. It is the table of our sacrifice and meal. In its strict sense, it is the most important fixture in the church. In the altar, we commemorate the Last Supper where Jesus instituted the Eucharist and the crucifixion where He performed the sacrifice of Himself. Another table that is important in the church is the table of the Word or the Ambo. There, the Word of God is proclaimed and exposed daily. The seats are also properly placed and arranged in the church. The chair of the presider is situated at the sanctuary facing the assembly, while the pews are set facing the altar. The other fixture that may be found in a church are the following.
The church, referred to in this context as the physical structure, is the house of God and the house of the community who is the body of Christ. It is holy because the very presence of Christ is there, not only in the Blessed Sacrament, but in us, as the members of His mystical body and as people who have been made holy by Him in baptism and have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in confirmation. Given the importance and the dignity of the celebration, even Masses that are celebrated outside the churches must have the same prayerful, dignified, and orderly character as those inside churches. Although the Mass may be celebrated outside the church, it is still the same Mass. It still has the same importance, the same solemn and sacred character. In the same way, the assembly deserves a certain beauty, order, and quality of worship. The Constitution on Liturgy requires what is called noble simplicity. The principle says that what we use in the liturgy should be noble. It has to be beautiful, clean, and dignified, and simple in a way that it is not too expensive, because there are other things the Church should spend for, like caring for the poor. As for the Church or people of God, the Mass is essential to our existence. Therefore, we must make proper preparations as we face the Lord in the sacred sacrifice. We must wear clothes that express our dignity as people of God. We wear something appropriate for meeting our God. We call it our Sunday best. The same rule of noble simplicity applies to what we wear. The ministers wear clothing that is appropriate for their respective roles in the Mass. In our day and age, Sunday has become relegated to a phenomenon called weekend, a time devoted for rest, relaxation, and leisure. Yes, it is true that we need a time for recreation, but we must not forget the religious value of Sunday. It is sad that many find it normal to go to the cinema, to the mall, to go out of town, instead of attending and participating in the Mass on Sundays. We must understand that it is very important that we, as baptized Christians, observe this day when the Savior resurrected and brought us the promised salvation. Sunday used to be a work day until Emperor Constantine decreed it to be a holiday so that Christians then could participate in the celebration of the Eucharist. From then on, believers defined and named Sunday as the Lord's Day. The resurrection is the fundamental event in Christianity. Upon it, the whole Christian faith rests. It happened on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, the reason why it is called the Lord's Day. All ancient Christian writings point to Sunday as the day for the Eucharist. The first day of the week commemorates the first day of the week when God began the work of creation. On that very day, He created light. In the same way, Christ is our light. His light shone the brightest in His resurrection on the first day of the week. His resurrection is considered as the redemption of all people and the beginning of the work of the new creation according to Himself. Sunday is the day of creation of the Father, our Creator, and the new creation in Christ, our Savior. Sunday commemorates the Paschal Mystery, which culminates in the Resurrection and leads to the sending of the Holy Spirit. Thus, it is our weekly Easter and our weekly Pentecost. Since the Spirit of God has been given to us in the sacraments, especially in our baptism and confirmation, 
Sunday then has the character of enabling us to remember this gift of the Spirit. The heart of Sunday is the Eucharist. On Sundays, we gather as a church, as one body of Christ, to celebrate in the Eucharist our creation, salvation, and sanctification. We gather around the two tables, the table of the Word and the table of the Eucharist. We partake of the one bread and one cup to remind us that we are one body and therefore members of one another. We are called to serve the church. The ordained, like me, lead in prayer and worship. This is our duty and vocation. The lay faithful actively participate in the ritual dialogue and perform many liturgical ministries. Please do not miss this beautiful opportunity. Let me also remind you, my friends, that we must preserve the dignity of the Mass befitting our encounter with Jesus Christ. And finally, let Sunday remind us of our identity as members of Christ, as an Easter people, and therefore sharers in His life and in His saving mission. So together, let us serve the Lord, let us serve the Church, let us take the lead in inviting our neighbors to attend the Mass. Till our next meeting, may the good Lord bless us all.